just uh, just to explain, um, we had to redo this interview. Obviously, there was um, a little bit of a glitch in the technology stuff that we had, so we did this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but I think that we can actually get a better interview out of this one because uh, now we know how to do it, and there's probably some really good material that uh, you you used in the last one, which I will touch on as well. And I think that um, uh, you can probably provide a little bit extra as well. Like now, now you uh, kind of understand what we're looking for, which is perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to touch on like uh, your NCAA experience, uh, your professional experience with FC Edmonton, the process, the signing, your maybe touch on like your uh, youth experience as well and how it uh, went through from you know high school and youth into your uh, collegiate career mm-hmm. and then how you found your agent and, and went through to the, the professional kind of side. And um, yeah. it's a really, really good, uh, really good story that you have and it's very relatable, which I, I really appreciate because... Um, there's going to be lots of kids like I went through a similar process myself. Yeah. Um, and uh, I know that there's going to be a lot of people that are interested in your story because they want to emulate it. And uh, you being able to explain how you did it will be very, very useful for those grade 11 and 12 kids who are looking to go division one, division two, go down to the States. Um, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. You're, you're the perfect person to speak to. Um, oh, perfect. So just... <laughs> <laughs> so just to just to like kind of recap a couple of things uh please like include anything that i may forget or missed out or is incorrect um you were at syracuse and providence during your collegiate career in ncaa and division one yeah um you were signed briefly by forge for uh the the, um, the champions Cap- league Con- yeah. Cap- yeah and mm-hmm. then uh you signed permanently with pacific and was immediately loaned to us at fc edmonton which was the purpose of uh uh, you're signing with Pacific because of our uh, the structure of the the loan system within mm-hmm. the CPL and how how a club worked at the time, um, mm-hmm. and uh, you had twenty is it twenty six appearances with uh, Edmonton last season, yeah. so you had a, a, a solid season with us, like playing significant yeah. minutes, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, now you're a free agent and, and looking to sign me a next club. So. Yeah. Uh, Tell me, just kind of explain a little bit about how you thought your season went personally, professionally, um, and uh, an overall kind of idea. Like, what, what's it like being a professional? Just kind of briefly explain it. Yeah, you know, it's definitely, um, um, you know, it's fun for sure. It's tough at times, too. You know, when I came into Edmonton, I came, you know, a week before the first game started. So, you know, I had to integrate myself quickly with the team. Um, I got off to a bit of a rough start. You know, I wasn't starting um, I only came off the bench for a few minutes here and there, but slowly, you know, as I got familiar with the team, the coaches, what they expected of me, you know, I kind of grew and I felt like the whole season from start to finish, you know, you saw that growth process just going up more and more better, better and better. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I'm really happy about my performances and how I grew as like a first year pro. Um, you know, I was the rookie in the league that played like the most minutes, you know, first year pro. I played the most minutes, so I'm proud of that. You know, 21 starts. Um, you know, I wish I got a couple goals or assists, but, you know, I'm, you know, a defensive man. <laughs> so, um, but no, definitely was happy. You know, it was a tough season. It was a young group. Uh, we only got a couple wins. Um, we got a lot of ties and, you know, like a lot of losses. But um, individually, it was good for me because I, because, you know, I grew a lot, you know, on the pitch, living away from home too, um, you know, just really growing in that, you know, in that professional lifestyle. So, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's really important to kind of uh, put into perspective our situation with, with the club. Um, Mm -hmm. We had a lot of first year pros. We had a lot of inexperienced pros um, and we had a very, very young squad overall. Um, And uh, it, it it was, uh, we were in a difficult position going into the season where we didn't have the squads that we wanted. We weren't able to retain the players that we wanted from the previous years um, because Mm -hmm. of the situation with the ownership of the club. So um, we had to bring in a lot of players that maybe were kind of on the fringe of minutes or fringe of of professional um, and amateur Mm -hmm. contracts, maybe from League One teams, uh, through Mm -hmm. through academies. So... um, yeah, I think overall, like for as a club um, during the season or as a, as a squad during the season, there was a, a, a good upward trajectory, and I'd have to agree with that on on, on you for you mm-hmm. on a personal level as well. Where um, I think maybe you were one of the people that benefited from uh, understanding what was required of them and filling a role mm-hmm. and becoming more uh, important as the season grew on. And I think mm-hmm. some people kind of get pigeonholed a little bit where. They think they can only be this role. They can only do that. 
and they don't understand what the requirements are uh, to, mm-hmm. to be a significant or an impactful player in, in that team. And I think that was one of the things that um, maybe I could say I appreciated in you throughout yeah, the course. year where you, you understood what the role was, what was expected, and you learned mm-hmm. from that and then and then use that to your advantage, which a lot of players kind of find tricky to do or, or don't recognize how to do. So it's really important mm-hmm. um, you know, how, yeah, like, uh, how I, yeah, like grew. Mm-hmm. Like, I definitely think, you know, if you're a first year pro or you're young or you're trying to make your name in like the game, it's to put your ego aside and, you know, be, and, you know, like be coachable, be like, you know, the coach says something, don't be like, oh, you know, just go and do it. Just do your job. And I find that if you listen to the coach, you know, the coach makes the decision at the end of the day um, mm-hmm. and you're on the coach's side, you know, even if you don't agree with it or this and that, you know, you have to be coachable. Um play how the coach wants you to play um Mm -hmm. and you know it sets you up to you know grow in the game so yeah i think you can find a balance definitely with with your Mm -hmm. style with your attitude with your the the kind of play that you like to play with what's necessary of you as well right some people are quite resistant to to change or to adaptation and i think uh we we touched i touched on it with um a previous coach brendan shaw with the with the white caps and we talked about adaptability where a players are more valuable if they're more adaptable. Mm-hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean positional changes, but maybe what's required of them. And uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it's really noticeable when players are, are buying into a concept or into um, how the coach needs them to play. And uh, yeah. again, like I think you did that really well because mm-hmm. um, we, we needed something from you when you came in and it kind of progressed and, and adjusted as the season went on. And you fit that role really well. So, so like I can say, like, well done to you for doing that as well. Um, yeah, thank you. So, yeah. uh, so let's let's kind of like stagger how we how we talk about your career. We'll start with the most immediate. We speak, spoke about FC Edmonton, then we'll kind of work our way gradually backwards, um, mm-hmm. so we can kind of see uh, how you kind of got to each place. Um, yeah. So I guess the the next most immediate place that you were was with Forge. So you were yeah. signed um, roughly this time last year. Um, mm-hmm. to play in a CONCACAF yeah. game, give or take this kind of timeline, uh, maybe mm-hmm. a little bit earlier, right, for the CONCACAF mm-hmm. Champions League. And uh, it was for the game against Cruz Azul. So Cruz that was Azul, a two-leg yeah. game? Two-leg game. One home game in Hamilton and one in uh, Mexico. So. so you were signed for both those games? I was signed for both those games. And also, if we progressed, I'd still be on that contract too. Um, how, you know, like however much we progressed. But of course, you know, we lost against them, so... So you went uh, to Mexico, you did uh, a few days there, you did uh, your training session in the stadium, and then obviously you were part of the squad, yeah. the match day squad that was uh, in the Azteca. So like, first of all, yeah. that's an, uh, something that's so unique to so many people. Like, how, What crazy. was the experience yeah. like? You're looking up and you're just seeing tens of thousands of people. What, what, tell, tell us about it. Like, yeah. What was it like? You know, um, I was glad that they signed me for Champions League, you know, um, before the first game, the first leg was at our home. I kind of uh, got the notion that I was going to be starting as like a right back. You know, I felt like, okay, like I'm going to be starting like in the pregame stuff um, days before, you know, I'm the right back there. I'd be inverted. I'd be in the mid and then defensively I'd go to right back. So it was like an inverted right right back. Um, And, you know, I was kind of nervous. I'm like, damn, my first professional game, you know, it's going to be against Cruz Azul. But, you know, I never made it on the pitch. I was on the bench the whole time in both games. But uh, when I went down to Mexico um, and seeing like the Azteca, the fans, even just training like the day before on the pitch, the grass, um, the stadium was amazing. And I'm taking in like, you know, I just became a a professional player and this is like my first, you know, game. Like this is like crazy. So, Mm -hmm. you know, definitely was like um, something cool to see and something that kind of motivated me too. you know you know, look at these levels of like the game, like I hope to play here, like, you know, like one day, you know, you always look, you know, what can I achieve, you know, so I'm glad that they signed me on to the contract, but you know, they didn't sign me for the season forge. So, um, you know, I was glad how you ended up with with us, right? Because yeah, 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 exactly. You know, so um, it's unfortunate, I like never got um, like a contract with forge, but you know, looking now, it's, you know, kind of worked out where I got to play a lot of games with like Edmonton, you know, at Forge, you know, if I stayed with a really good team that already had their team built, um, Mm -hmm. where would I fit in? Would I get, you know, a lot of minutes? Would I have grown as much as I did last year? You know, I don't think so. So I think, you know, Edmonton was a great move for me to grow. 
um, as a first year pro, but, um, you know, yeah, to be a part of the champions league, you know, con you know, in CONCACAF was, you know, obviously a highlight for sure. Of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. Um, what was your connection with, with forge? How did you come about that, that to sign with them? What, how did that come mm -hmm. about? Yeah. So basically I grew up playing with Sigma FC, uh, coach Bobby was the director there at, mm -hmm. uh, Sigma. And then when the CPL created, he became the head coach of forge. So, right. I went off to school from my academy to Syracuse and Providence later. And in the summers, I'd come back home and I'd play league, you know, I played league one with Sigma and then I'd train with Forge in the summer. So I'd, I'd be training with Forge and playing games on the weekend with Sigma, you know, like mm -hmm. the uh, league, you know, like the league one team. Right. And um, so I'd be training there for summers, lots of summers. So they knew me, they liked me, you know, I had a good relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when I entered the draft, I never got drafted slowly, but surely um, I ended up at Forge, went to preseason. They signed me for the uh, Champions League, but because of numbers, you know, U21 stuff, you know, they never gave me a contract for the season. So that's why I, you know, ended up at, uh, at like Edmonton, but it was really Sigma being at Sigma and being involved with Bobby that got yeah. me that opportunity there. So We'll, we'll touch yeah. on that a little bit later, mm -hmm. uh, relationships with, with clubs and coaches, because uh, it's so mm -hmm. important, like just for, for coaches to be able to trust players or to understand that they're, they're a good person, they know their work ethic, etc. We'll touch on that a little bit later, mm -hmm. but you did touch on um, uh, the draft that you mentioned. So yeah. let's rewind yeah. again one more time um, to your collegiate yeah. career. So uh, most, uh, I guess most recently you finished at Providence you did your final season at Providence and the previous mm -hmm. years you were at Syracuse so yeah. walk us through maybe uh the draft initially what happened with that and then how you came about Syracuse uh afterwards okay so basically I was at Syracuse for four years I decided to make a jump to Providence um you know Syracuse is an ACC school they just won the national championship you know they're a great team and they mm -hmm. are still a great team yeah um but I took a move to Providence more so for me to play my position that I wanted to play was the midfield. You know, at Syracuse, I was a utility player. I was versatile. I played right back, left back for a season, center back sometimes, uh, six, eight, ten, you name it. Like I played everywhere on the pitch except for the front three and the keeper. So yeah. it was good. You know, I was the captain at Syracuse, but I never felt like I could fully perfect my craft. Um, you know, I felt like, you know, I'd be left back one game, right back one game. And it just wasn't, you know, I couldn't, for me to get drafted, I felt like I had to play one position and just own it. So Providence what was gave the, me that. What was the draft that you wanted to enter into, the MLS draft? Yes, yes, okay. like that MLS draft. So yeah. um, when I went to Providence, my whole goal was the MLS draft and to get drafted by an MLS team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I started the season off good. I played. I started every single game but one. Um, I played a lot. I was an integral part of the team. Um, I led the team in most assists too. In that year, we made it to the Sweet 16. We won a regular season in like the Big East. Yep. We lost in the final against Georgetown in the playoffs. And then um, we went to the Sweet 16 and lost against Georgetown again. So mm -hmm. Georgetown nemesis. was our nemesis basically the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, but definitely, um, you know, like I entered the draft and I had high hopes at the time, um, but I never got drafted. And now looking back, you know, I don't think I set myself up uh, for success, you know, um, I thought, you know, I had an agent that would help me and stuff like that. But unfortunately, you know, um, if I were to give people advice, um, it, you know, it would be, you know, to find an agent who's going to promote you to know that the agent has connections within the league that could help you, um, you know, and really have a good relationship with the, with, with, you know, with the agent that could, you know, that, you know, you could talk to them about certain things, you know, what teams are you talking to? Um, and unfortunately, I never, you know, I kind of put my trust uh, just blindly in people that I trusted throughout, like, my life to, like, help me. But unfortunately, you know, not that I would have got drafted, but I feel like I could have set myself up better if I, you know, had, you know, maybe a different agent, you know, at the time helping me. So, your, yeah. um, but I never your got former drafted. Teammate, and, your former teammate, Wesley Timoteo, spoke of something very similar to... Um, he said that mm -hmm. you have to build a trust with your agent before signing with them. Um, and he said, it's more yeah. like a, a brotherhood, you know, you don't just trust one way. It's, it's two way street. 
uh, you get mm -hmm. to know them, you understand them as a person, they understand you as a person. Um, and obviously that takes a little bit of time and, and sometimes you feel like uh, rushed or, or time is of the essence, but to get the decision right is, is probably even more beneficial to mm -hmm. you if it takes a tiny bit longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. No, definitely. You know, yeah, like looking back, you know, I wish I would have done things differently, but you know, that's why I'm here. And that's why I'm, you know, talking about my process and stuff. So people learn mm -hmm. from my mistakes and they can make better yeah. decisions on their paths. So, yeah, some people you don't I mean, have to learn from your own mistakes you can learn from other people's and this is why someone like you is, exactly, is the perfect person exactly. to speak to you've done the good things you've done mm -hmm. some mistakes we like we all have and uh and now mm -hmm. uh, the next generation they can say hey simon chantafio did this wrong but this is how mm -hmm. he would say to do it if he did it again and it's mm -hmm. it's so useful um so mm -hmm. let's rewind again like a little bit more to uh um, like your, your, I guess your your collegiate career, your your experience there. What was it like? Yeah. You're at a top D Division One school, one of the, one of the bigger schools in the country with a great history. What's it like being a, a college athlete for for these schools? Yeah, I want to say Syracuse is definitely one of my dream schools to go to when I was in, in like when I was in high school playing with uh, Sigma. Um, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's definitely, it's definitely fun. You know, when you first get there, you're like, oh my God, you know, this is, this is, uh, perfect. You know, this is what I wanted. Um, you know, you kind of get the sense like, oof, where, you know, when I, when like, I was a freshman, you know, I was like, oh, these guys are so big, they're strong. I'm so young. And I was kind of just taking in like the moment. And I wasn't like, I think at the time, you know, I came in with, with, uh, Tejon too. Mm -hmm. And Tejon right from the get go was like, I'm going to show these guys. And uh, he just exploded me. I was still, you know, a little bit like, wow, you know, this is, you know, I'm so happy to be here. I think I was caught up, in, you know, in it like a bit, but um, definitely be like being a part of a big school, like the community, um, you know, playing soccer there with the fans there, you know, Syracuse, like there's no professional team around there. So Syracuse was like the professional team for basketball, soccer, hockey, all those sports. Um, and it was just, you know, something amazing to be a part of, you know, the school was, you know, fun. Um, you know, the team was great, you know, it was competitive. Mm -hmm. Uh, the coaching staff was great. You know, it was definitely like, a like a fun four years that I had there. Were you, was sure. there a lot of pressure on you? Did you feel pressure as a, as a student athlete, you know, with your grades, with, uh, the performance side yeah. of things, time commitment? Yeah. So, uh, because, because my parents were so, you know, they're strict on me with school. Um, I was a really good student, you know, I majored in, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, biology. Mm -hmm. So, um, I had a good GPA. I had hard courses like organic chemistry, cell mm -hmm. bio, all these tough courses like calculus, physics. Um, and I was really focused on my school part, but also like the soccer part. But I knew that basically if I didn't make it professionally, I needed something to fall back on. So I had pressure in both the academic Academic set and both the uh, soccer set because I wanted to play pro and that was my dream and I always mm -hmm. wanted that first and foremost and plan B was the school of course so yeah. there's a lot of pressure playing you know my freshman year I started half the games my sophomore year I started half the games then my junior and senior year I started all the games I became captain in, my, in like my last year mm -hmm. I felt like I really grew within the team um, throughout the years um, but yeah pressure was always there I think pressure you know, it makes players, you know, you could crack under pressure. Um, you could, you know, the pressure of the academic setting, I could have crushed, I could have not cared, you know, just kind of given up and just focus on soccer, you mm -hmm. know, that could have got me somewhere. But, you know, really having the pressure of focusing on both things was important to me. Um, and, you know, I'm glad, you know, still, I'm glad I, I, you know, worked hard on my academics too. You know, like I always have something to fall back on in case things don't work out down the road. So, so you, you played yeah. with uh, a couple of uh, Canadian internationals while you were away at school. Um, and you, you mentioned yeah. how uh, you had two focuses. You were very, very focused on your school and very focused on your football. Now, for your boys mm -hmm. that you, uh, you played with, how would you assess their focus? Were they solely focused on yeah. football? Were they split? Um, obviously, now they've gone on to quite significant levels. Um, with World yeah. Cups and Champions Leagues and things like that. So they are of a very, very high standard um, and have done very well for themselves. What would you say um, their focus was? Because there's going to be a lot of talented boys that 
go to university and maybe are just looking for that single year of experience where they that they shine mm-hmm. and they move on. And then some mm-hmm. uh, will be focused on school as well because they understand the academic side is a, a very, very realistic plan B. It's a great backup plan that you shouldn't mm-hmm. just uh, mm-hmm. uh, neglect. So what would you say like their focus was as well in comparison to you? I mean, uh, Kamal, Tejan, and Ryan, those are the three guys that were really close to me. They're all, ca- they're all from Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, and they all have made it to the, to like the big stage, you know, Ryan in the MLS, Kamal so that's Ryan in the MLS and at the world cup. Yeah. Kamal Miller and Tejan Buchanan. Yeah. So, and, and Tejan, of course, you know, he's in champions league playing now, mm-hmm. uh, you know, crazy, crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, they weren't as focused on, uh, school as I was, or as, uh, as like, or as other players were. Um, Tejon was a smart kid. Tejon got good grades, but he never really cared. But Tejon was very, was like very smart. Ryan too, you know, Ryan, you know, if he tried and stuff like that, he'd definitely uh, get good grades. Kamal, I wasn't too, too close to us with the academic setting, but I know that their main objective was to use this as a pedestal to jump to the pro level. So yeah. if kids are trying to come to college, you know, there's a lot of kids that don't use it for school. Cool. Yes, your school is paid for. And I look at it as like, look, they're paying for like my, you know, they're paying for my education. It's mm-hmm. $60,000 to go here for like one year. Yeah. Why wouldn't I take advantage of this opportunity and Absolutely. really try and better myself? You know, or you could look at it, you know, if you're trying to just go pro and use this as like a pedestal and something you could fall back on, there's always school there too. You know, it's definitely a route to go. You know, you've seen Tejon do it, Ryan do it, Kamal, Miles Robinson, Mo Adams. There's tons of players that have, you know, DeAndre Curry plays for TFC now. Yeah. There's tons of pros. You know, a whole bunch got drafted every year. Exactly. You know, and they use it as almost like experience for these MLS teams to come and get them. So if you want to play in the MLS, you know, it's really the best shot is to go to a school in the States Mm -hmm. or be a part of an MLS academy. But in my opinion, you should go to the school in the States because if something happens, you have your education to fall back on. And I think it's critical. But yeah. You know, Tejon says, you know, like I watched, you know, something where he said, you know, I never had had like a plan B. My plan A was to always play pro. I, I you know, you think about plan B, C, D, you're not going to accomplish plan A. And I get that. It works for some people. But in my opinion, in, it's a very rare few that really, you know, achieve their plan A straight from the get go. Yeah. You know, you need a plan B. You need a plan C. You need a plan D. You know, sometimes things don't work out like the way you want. Yeah. Um, and that's the majority of people. So, you know, it's always important to value, you know, the academic side of things yeah. when you go to school. The, the, the vast majority, to, the vast majority of the MLS drafts, uh, draftees are, uh, fourth year, they're seniors, they've finished their collegiate career. Yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the only way that they could have became a senior is if their grades were good enough to make themselves, uh, or retain eligibility through their grades. Um, yeah. So yeah. regardless of, of how much you care of or don't care about your education, you still have to go through the whole four years of process um, to, uh, mm-hmm. to get to mm-hmm. the end and then be uh, mm-hmm. uh, put yourself forward for the MLS draft. But you still have that plan B. So a lot of us don't account for uh, significant injuries or, or changes in lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Things mm-hmm. happen that, uh, you know, we don't want to mm-hmm. sometimes admit are possible you know, a leg break or God forbid anything else. So uh, Mm -hmm. making sure that you're still eligible uh, or or having a great plan B because things change. Life happens, life changes and it throws some Mm -hmm. curveballs at you. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like, and you, you would have someone that followed that kind of belief that, Hey, I, Mm -hmm. I still consider my academics to be super, super important during this process. Um, Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to, again, like if I can, like just rewind again, and probably this is the final rewind back to high school. So um, you're you're grade 10, 11, 12 kind of years. You're a good academic student. You're a good player playing a good club level. You get noticed. What are you thinking during those years? What's your process? What are you looking to achieve to get noticed by these NCAA schools? What are some of the things that you did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when I started high school, I uh, I played with Sigma. Um, I got invited to go down to Genk in Belgium to go train with their academy for two weeks. Um, and mm-hmm. it's something that I really wanted to do. And me and my parents were still like, Europe can still work out here. We can still, you know, potentially go to Europe. And that was kind of like, you know, like the big, big goal. 
but as time went on and we got more and more, you know, like realistic with ourselves, um, the NCAA seemed like the perfect shot, the smartest choice to take because mm -hmm. the school part and also the still potential to play pro if you're good enough. So um, basically as part of Sigma and Sigma has, has showcases, they have summer camps, they have um, winter camps, they have showcases in, the, in uh, December too. And um, where hundreds of colleges come from the state, they come from Canada and they all come and watch these games. Mm -hmm. So when I was in grade nine, 10 and when, sorry, when I was in grade nine and, and uh, 10, um, there was these Sigma showcases and we'd all uh, play there and coaches would come from the state. Um, and Syracuse saw me play there at, you know, at those showcases. Um, Sorry, I, I've totally just. Uh, I lost That's right. So you had you had a you had a relationship. <laughs> That's right. So you had a relationship yeah. with um, uh, uh, Syracuse from kind of early on, right? So you said that yeah. you went to these combines, you went to these showcases that were put on for colleges. So now you're in front of the right eyes. You're in front of lots of scouts or MLS head coaches, mm -hmm. MLS mm -hmm. uh, sorry, um, NCAA head coaches and and assistant coaches who are now looking at all of the players. Um, on uh, on view for for potential um, student athletes down the road, so now we've got to this point where they're looking at you. They've got their eyes on you. Um, what are some of the other things that they can be doing? The, the 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 players can be doing. How does that process work as well? Yes. So basically, like being part of an academy where those coaches come is important too. Like you want to go to the best team that you're near. Yeah. So in my case, it was Sigma or Vaughn and both Sigma and Vaughn, they have showcases where these coaches come right. and it's important to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Or you want to get into a team where they're a part of that too, where they invite them to those showcases. Yeah. Also, Sigma and Vaughn, they do US trips down to the States and they play in showcases down there too. So it's right. important to be a part of a team that has connections, be a part of, you know, coaches like Bobby or Patrice that have connections in the States. Uh, that can help you, that can vouch for you, you know, put their name on the line and say, take this kid, trust me, he's worth it. Mm -hmm. um, but also relying on just that to get yourself a scholarship is tough too. You know, there's so many kids that want to play, um, you know, in the NCAA like level in the States and in Canada, and you're an international player in Canada, so it's even tougher. So um, there's things that you can do, you know, A, there's be a part of a, you know, be, you know, be a part of Sigma or Vaughn or a good team that you're near, um, mm -hmm. wherever you're from, from Vancouver to Halifax, you know, be a part of the best team there. Uh, second is go down by yourself to combines in the States where these universities, they have camps. You know, it's important. I just went to the day camps because I felt like the two day camps or three day camps are a bit much. And, you know, they're a bit expensive too. The one day camp is sometimes just 200 bucks, you, you know, like you go down there. And um, you get to play games, you showcase yourself. And that's where Syracuse knew me. I went to Syracuse. I went to Boston College. I went to Cornell. Cornell liked me a lot. But with the Ivy League system, you don't get um, athletic money. You only get the academic money. And, I, you know, like the Ivy League, tough to get any money. So um, Syracuse was the team that really showed the interest from grade nine. So they'd come see me in the showcases all throughout nine, 10, 11, and 12. Um, I'd go down to say, I was like, we'd, we'd go down to showcases down in the States too. And they'd be there watching. I think they'd watch me like 10 to 20 times before they actually said yes. So, so it was ultimately a long from those, was still... from those um, like yeah. showcases and viewings and what have you, they'd already built a relationship with you, which was super important, right? Because it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot harder to justify signing a player that's completely unknown as a person, as opposed to a player that you've been consistently mm -hmm. watching over time, built a relationship with, you understand mm -hmm. their, their personality, a little bit more about their character, um, which again, like I said, we'll touch mm -hmm. on in a moment. Um, but it's you're not just springing a surprise on these coaches yeah. out of nowhere. You're, you're being consistent with your actions over time and making sure you're getting in front of the right people. Mm -hmm. And like what you want to do, like if you're in high school and you have a list of top schools that you want to go to, make a list, get the university the coach's name the coach's number uh when their camps are because every team has camps um mm -hmm. in the summer or the winter all throughout like the year 
and yeah. really just narrow down which teams you want to go to. Reach out to the two, you know, reach out to the coach. Say, hey, I'm trying to come to this camp. Um, just letting you know, get down there, really make a big impression. Uh, be, you know, talkative with the coaching staff there. Get them in your mind thinking about you. And it's really like you're trying to sell yourself in order to, you know, uh, get signed one day, you know, and it might not work out at a school A, school B, school C, it might work out at school EFG, you know, yeah. so. Mm. Um, but you're, op you know, you're opening up your opportunities, take, though, There's, you're creating more chances for yourself, exactly. essentially, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and I think, you know, I'm blessed to have gone to Syracuse, you know, Syracuse was so close to me, especially from Toronto, it's just, you know, a quick drive. Mm -hmm. But, you know, looking back to, you know, you could easily take a quick plane ride to universities like Duke, um, Stanford, mm -hmm. you know, big, big schools and, you know, give yourself a shot. You know, there's nothing to lose. It's worth the investment to go down there and show yourself to these coaches. So, um, sure. did any of those coaches, do you know, uh, did they reach out to anyone you knew, like your club coach, uh, a school coach Did they communicate with anybody? Yeah. So mainly it was just with Sigma is just with Bobby. Right. And Bobby was kind of like the lead. Um, now schools in the States, they value the high school soccer, but I think they know now that high school soccer in Canada, it's not really how it is in, in like the States and our high school coaches, they're not really soccer coaches. They're just teachers that take right. on the role. Yeah. But in the States, it's a bit different with, you know, there's actually soccer coaches for those, you know, schools in high school and being a part of a good high school is important to get drafted. But in Canada it's being a part of a good rep team, a good, academy mm -hmm. you know being a part of tfc mls you yeah. know those mls ones you know it's great and stuff but um you know if you're not a part of those there's specific clubs that you can go to that you know have connections in the states um and they're all over canada you know just be a part of the best team and always you know be competing with the best players in your in your region and do the best you can to play at the highest like level and um if your team doesn't have those connections like same um, for me, mm -hmm. um, you know, you could go down to the States like we talked about and, you know, just go down to those camps. So. Um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, if you, if you wouldn't mind as well, just touching, maybe if you, if you can remember, was there academic standards that, uh, you're expected to achieve, uh, by these schools during high school? So was that, did you have to do an SAT, I presume as well? Um, so you, yeah. obviously yeah. if you're going down to NCAA, you're going to be a college athlete, you're going to be a student athlete who, um, needs to have uh, a grades to be admitted into school. So do you remember anything about that as well? Yeah. So what I could say is the higher the grades, like the better. Um, if you're in high school, um, it depends what school you go to too, because every school has different requirements to get into like the program that you want to get into. Um, with Syracuse, it wasn't as strict. You know, sometimes the athletic system kind of guides you into the program that they want you to play on their team. They kind of forego yeah. a lot of the, um, you know, they kind of turn a blind eye and they help you, you know, get in. Um, but yeah, the SAT, yeah. you need an SAT. It's not a tough test. You mm -hmm. take some courses before, you know, usually um, teens, they usually do it all together with a group of kids that are in grade 11 and they're trying to go on to play um, in the States and they get in a, you know, a group setting, they all pay a little bit and they all learn uh, what the SAT is like. And, you know, doing those courses that set you up to, you know, how to write like an SAT is important because you want to pass and you want to get a good grade too, because it helps you with mm -hmm. academic money potentially. And it's easier for the athletic system to, to like get you in. So it's, okay. I would say to like, you know, like the SAT is to do it right. Like the first time, you know, take the time to study. Don't just think, oh, I'll pass, you know, because it is difficult in, a sense where you have to understand like the test and what the questions are like. and someone who can teach you in a course to show you what it's like you know it sets you up mm -hmm. where you can just write it the first time and you're done you don't have to wait six months you don't have to wait a year in case you fail you just do it right the first time so uh but yeah the okay you know i'm, I'm sure gonna edit out this the part highest. by the way simon simon yeah, i'm yeah. gonna edit this part out because I, I noticed that your video just went um is it can you okay. see me yeah 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 I, yeah you can still I see me. Is it like glitchy or is it okay? Okay. Yours is it, it said a that the grainy. video. Re re okay. That's uh, fine. It said the video record, the video uh, will come back when your internet improves. So 
just just bear with it. it, it I anticipate it will be completely fine because it's uploaded locally. So we can okay. just continue like normal and I'll edit out this little conversation right here, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Sound good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can continue. I can continue on whenever you're whenever you're ready. Give me a sec. Okay, I'm good. You good? Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So your your grades are exceptionally important then because it, obviously you can increase your your scholarship funding that will pay for your education. Um, it helps with your your admittance. It it makes you easily. Um, uh, I guess I guess the head coach would have an easier time of of getting you admitted into school. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, obviously the grades are important too, and obviously if you if you which you should have a plan B during uh, this entire four year kind of process, your 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 education is is extremely important as well. Um, was there anything else that you remember of any kind of um, anything that you might be able to recommend these players do? Let's say they're not part of Vaughn or not part of Sigma, like you said, they can do showcases. Um, uh, how can they get on the radar for for coaches? Do you know of any other kind of methods? Yeah, definitely. Um, having a highlight tape is important too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, if you reach out to a coach, you know, you want to, you know, you want a CV and and like you want a high and like you want a highlight tape, and you need those to kind of get the coach's attention. If you just sign, you know, if you just send like an email with just words, you know, the coaches get hundreds of those like a day. You know, from kids that want to come. You know, you don't stand out. So the best way to stand out is to create a video, not too too long. Because, you know, you don't want it 20 minutes long. You want a good seven to eight minute video that the coach could watch your best clips at, at the start. So he gets, you know, so he interested. Um, but it's definitely reaching out with that and saying, I want to come down to camp. What camp should, you know, what, you know, what <clears throat> camps should I come down to? And it's really doing those mm -hmm. camps, I think, are the most important. If you're not a part of, you know, a system like Sigma, where those coaches come to you. Or if you're not a part of Vaughn. Um, or you're not a part of, you know, a, you know, like a, uh, you know, t, you know, like TFC, um, impact, mm -hmm. which, you know, if you're not a part of those, then it's tough for coaches to like really see you. So it's definitely creating those highlight tapes, the CV and going down to camps in the States. I think that's the most important thing. I think one of the things that maybe is less, uh, tangible, but you can still do is, um, uh, building that relationship with the coach. So I, I, this is what I said I was come back. Mm -hmm. I would come back to. Um, and when I say this, we're not talking about being like a, a brown noser or a busybody, like a teacher's pet. We're talking about yeah. um, having good references of character. Are you a good person? Are you a good leader on this team? Do you have a good work ethic? Do you come to mm -hmm. training on time or slightly earlier to get yourself ready? Do you have good daily training habits? Um, you know, is this mm -hmm. person someone that gets along with the rest of the team or are they problematic? Do they have an attitude and those things that, you know, maybe mm -hmm. you can't measure per se, uh, but you can, you can observe, um, are, are really important to say for, from my perspective as a, as a coach, you know, if, if someone has a bad attitude or they're not, uh, they don't have a good chemistry with other, uh, players, like on a, on a social level, um, it, it causes problems mm -hmm. in the dressing room that we want to avoid if they have good habits you know, the, those good habits rub off on other players. Are they willing to help mm -hmm. other players that maybe need a little bit of guidance or, or, you know, put their arm around their shoulder and say, hey, it's okay, we got this, let's go again. Those kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, those qualities in, 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 in your character go a long way. So for me as a coach, I, I'm always observing those. Um, was there anything that maybe you, you, mm -hmm. you noticed about yourself or other players that coaches no noticed during that, uh, that kind of tie in with that? Yeah. So you want to put your best self forward. So when you're training with your high school coach or with, uh, your academy coach, it's doing the right things in front of them too, not just in front of those coaches too in the States, because if there's interest from those schools in like, if there's interest from those schools in the States those schools in the States will call your coach and say, how are his habits? Does he show up to training on time? What's his attitude like? And your coach will be honest because, you know, they want to create a good relationship with them too and not lie, you know? Yeah. So it's really starting those things. And yeah, you know, you got to be on time. You have to be a leader. You have to, you know, pick people up beside you. You have to embody all those qualities um, for a coach to really take a chance on you. Because there's so many kids in the States that want what you want. You know, there's so many kids in Canada that want to get a scholarship. 
So it's kind of like what sets you apart. And if you check all those boxes off, the, you know, like the likelihood of you getting into that school just goes up. You know, there's so many kids and let's say you're tied between, they're both great players. They sit, you know, they play the same position, but his attitude, you know, I hear it's not the best. He thinks he's, you know, big time. Uh, this kid is humble. He works hard. He runs the most. He, you know, shows up to training like an hour before, puts mm-hmm. in the work at the gym too. You know, then you're going to look and take that kid because that kid is going to be more, you know, beneficial in the long run. You know, even if you're, yeah. you know, like a little bit better, sometimes they'll take that kid that has the right attitude, you know, yeah. and I find in this school in you know, school in, in like the States, it's more so um, how you present yourself. It's the attitude. It's the, der- you know, it's a determination. It's the hard work that, you know, sets you apart. So, yeah, I think um, obviously the higher level you go, the finer the margins are. And uh, sometimes those yeah. off the field characteristics, habits, behaviors, uh, personality, et cetera, those, um, those things get looked at even greater because if you have, like you just said, two players of a very identical ability, a coach is li- more likely to take a player that will be beneficial for his team mm-hmm. as opposed to being uh, maybe uh, a little bit more difficult or a challenging type of personality. So those things mm-hmm. get looked at even greater because you want those players, like you said, who come in early for training. They, they want to learn. They mm-hmm. have a good attitude with their teammates. They uh, are willing to do the dirty work when others aren't. Uh, put their arm around the shoulder. Those are such important qualities. The higher the level gets because those percentages become mm-hmm. so fine that you're looking for any mm-hmm. edge um, that could benefit your, 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 your tactics, your, your squad, your chemistry, um, just the interaction on field and off field. That's so important. Um, mm-hmm. so those kind of things, mm-hmm. you know, like they, they are, they're extremely important to remember as a grade 11 and 12 kid. If you're trying to go to, uh, NCAA school or even an, an academy, those things don't go unnoticed mm-hmm. when you think a coach isn't watching, there's a good mm-hmm. chance they are watching. So, um, mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. it, it sounds totally. like you, you did something, um, that would kind of suggest you had a similar kind of attitude during that kind of uh the school years mm-hmm. to be to mm-hmm. be scouted um, yeah you, go on go ahead sorry mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah you know like definitely is like the best thing that i you know that i could say about myself that really worked is being coachable is you know sometimes coaches want like a yes man they want people that are going to listen to to you know that are going to listen to them and not have e- you know not have egos so mm-hmm. i think it's important you know to you know, be coachable, especially at a young age when you're trying to make it, you know, is to listen to the coach and do what the coach asks. Um, you know, and I think that's the, you know, that's, you know, that's what worked for me at Syracuse, at Providence too, um, at Edmonton, you know, at Forge too, when I was there for a bit, you know, that, I think that, like, that's what helped me work, you know? So. I guess, um, yeah, all, the, all that information is absolutely brilliant because this is this is stuff that, mm-hmm. you know, the younger generations, that they might be unsure of what to do, how to do it, why they need to do it. And all this reinforces, um, you know, your habits and behaviors. And, and they're so important. So I want to I want to bring us a little bit more to to today. What's going on today? The golden mm-hmm. question. Where are you now? What's going on now? Um, and, and why are you in the situation? What, what how, how is everything going right now presently? Yeah. So, um, after Where are you training Edmonton, Where are you? yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, Pacific, uh, Pacific never picked up my contract. So I'm a free agent now. So mm-hmm. right now I'm currently looking for a club to play at. Um, I'm still in the process. I'm dealing with my agent. I on first wave sports, uh, guy bell, you know, he's a great guy. Um, and you know, we're dealing with that now and try and we're trying to find a club in the CPL or the States to play in. Mm-hmm. Um, so right now, you know, it's off season, you know, I look at it as a time not to just maintain, but to grow and get better. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at the last season, what, you know, what did you lack? What, you know, what could you do better at? Um, and for me, it's my explosiveness. It's, you know, the first couple of yards, the, you know, the next five yards, you know, um, and explosiveness is something I've wanted to like work on. So I do, you know, drill specific for explosiveness, weights specific for explosiveness. Um, and I train with uh, Ryan Raposo. Mm-hmm. Um, he's now gone back to the Whitecaps now, so he's playing there. 
Um, but I also train with a few CPL guys. You know, we play pickup games too, you know, with a few pro guys as well. Um, a few semi-pro guys um, just to get touches in and to maintain that game fitness. Um, but yeah, we go to this athlete lab. It's, <clears throat> um, it, it's, uh, it's uh, up in Milton and it's a really great place. It has an indoor turf, a net, and it's kind of just doing all the basics. It's getting the ball, receiving, turning, checking shoulders, passing, movement, quick feet. Um, and it really helps, you know, in the off season to, you know, just get your touchdown, perfect your craft and stuff like that. So definitely view the off season as, 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 as like a time to grow rather than just maintain fitness and think, oh, in preseason, I'll just get fit. Really use this as a time to get super fit, grow. And then when you go to preseason, you have a better chance to impress the coaches there, um, you know, where you're going to be next. So instead of waiting to get fit during that time. I think it's really good to not to, um, I guess, uh, pigeonhole yourself into where you want to go next or what you want to do next, how you want to play next, um, with what kind of team, etc. cetera. Um, so what do you see on the, on the horizon? Like you mentioned, um, beforehand, like with our general conversation, just keeping up and stuff, like you'd be happy to kind of play in certain places. Um, what's your, what's your kind of goal over the next few weeks? Yeah, definitely. My goal is to see what uh, teams in the CPL open up. Uh, you know, my agent is talking with a few of them, a few in the championship too. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, but my goal is to eat, is to play right now in the CPL or the championship in the championship in the states. Mm. Um, and I think that's what I want. We'll see how that goes. You know, I'm hopeful, but uh, we'll see how how that goes. You know, uh, I just have to let my agent do the work, and you know. Yeah. hope you know hope that something pops up so um what's uh what's keeping you busy each day like you, you talk, touched on like doing your fitness and stuff are you doing stuff off the field um that maybe might get overlooked are you uh, what are you working on yeah um definitely it's working out is the main thing you know also it's family time to girlfriend to you know when we're out playing pro in different places you know i've been down in the states a whole bunch you know i've done distance with my girlfriend for the last six years so it's been tough mm-hmm. So, you know, when we come home, always nice, you know, to hang out a lot. Um, you know, back in Edmonton, you know, you're by yourself. Sometimes the pro lifestyle can be a bit, you know, lonely at times. So definitely good when you come home to connect with your family, your parents. Um, it's fun to be around them. Um, the hobbies <clears throat> that I'm doing now is mainly just learning Greek. You know, I've been, yeah. you know, I've been grinding on, you know, on that. You know, I'm a Greek citizen and I feel like it's my responsibility to learn the like, uh, to to uh to uh to uh, learn like the language fantastic so uh that's what i'm doing now and just hanging with friends and working out so Brilliant. nothing much but love yeah. it um i just want to make sure that uh of all the things that the subjects that we've covered you've made sure to get everything in that you need to say that would be useful to for yourself first and foremost to to me and helping uh what i'm trying to achieve and, and grow and then uh maybe look um, or anything that you might think may be beneficial to you know, boys and girls who are in grade 10, 11, 12, trying to look to go to the States, to, to university in Canada, wherever it may be, but essentially trying to elevate their level. What what could be something that, you know, maybe sticks with them um, in your last kind of message? Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say what sets players apart from others is the mentality part. Uh, I think mentality is the most important thing of being of being successful in, in, uh, sports and business and anything. Um, it's having a good head on, on like your shoulders. And, you know, if things don't work out, out the first time, it's not to just give up, you know, sometimes plan A doesn't work out. You need a plan B. Sometimes plan C doesn't work out Mm -hmm. plan D, you know, you need a plan. And sometimes, you know, you get caught up Oh, it's not working out, you know, what's happening. Am I good enough to put that, you know, is to put that, is to put that to like the side and focus on them and focus on like the uh, mentality pieces, you know, what can you do better? Um, you know, is believing that you can do it. Um, so I think the mental piece, you know, sets player, you know, sets, you know, sets players apart. And I think that's the most important thing is to have a good level head. And yeah. So. Yeah. Fantastic. Probably, yeah, um, yeah. That was filled with information. That was brilliant. So I'm, I'm su- I, I really appreciate you doing that. I guess, now the last course, piece would be yeah. just so everyone can get to know you a little bit better. Um, uh, I, I just have uh, a few questions. 
so that people can understand yeah. who Simon is and um, what he kind of where is where his head is, what, what's his likes and dislikes and stuff. Yeah. Um, so my first question uh, of of this series of questions here and the quick fire questions is, um, what's your favorite team? Uh, Arsenal. FC. Are they going to win the league this year? The Premiership. Uh, I think so. Yes. Um, what's your favorite food? Uh, I'd say a euro uh, from Greece. You know, a nice, yeah. Uh, a nice, yeah. What's your uh, current show that you're watching? Uh, I'm not really watching shows. I just watch movies on Netflix. So Fair no enough. shows right now that I can think of. So, but what, what's <laughs> what's your favorite movie, or what's the last movie you watched? I watched Interstellar was the last one, and that's you know I've watched that ton, tons of times, and it's a great one. So <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you read any books lately? If so, what's the last one? I uh, haven't read many books. Uh, I think just the Bible is what I read now, and that's pretty much it. It's just the Bible. Who is your favorite country to watch at the World Cup? It was Argentina because of Messi. <laughs> so and can and uh, Canada of course because of Tejan, Kamal, you know, Alistair Johnson. A lot of the players yeah. there. What's your uh, current wake up time in off season? Around nine in the morning. Um, sometimes sooner if we go to work out, but uh, around nine mainly is when I wake up. Start Do you have day. a uh, go to song that you currently like? I listen to a bunch of Greek songs because I'm trying to learn <laughs> it. So yeah. I mean, I listen to just Greek songs on repeat. I can't name the name. It's names, a good way but, to learn the language. Uh, Exactly. <laughs> What's uh, one thing you're looking forward to this uh, this year, 2023? Uh, just to be a part of a uh, team and to really improve myself uh, on the pitch and to uh, make some more noise at, as a player. Uh, I just need like an opportunity, and uh, I just really, really want to grab that opportunity. You know, grab it and uh, just succeed this year. Brilliant. Um, so, and I guess you touched yeah. on this one already: uh, the good old uh, debate, Messi or Ronaldo. Messy for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Clear. Brilliant. Simon, you've been uh, uh, full of information. I really appreciate you uh, spending your time, your, your morning mm -hmm. with me. It's been, it's been extremely insightful and uh, I've loved to chat with you and, and hearing about your story. So I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it too.